this All right, let's make a formal introduction for our listeners. Uh, good afternoon, Arrett. My name is Claudio, and I'm calling you from Washington, D.C., uh, from the studios in Fairfax City. We're very grateful that Arrett Madillian accepted our invitation to our show. Arrett, welcome back, man. Hello, Claudio. It's nice to see you again. Hope you're doing good. All, all good, man. For people that don't know you, uh, you know, feel free and elaborate about who you are, you know, where you born, like in a musical family, you know, how old were you when you perhaps began taking guitar lessons or piano lessons before you moved from Los Angeles to being in France now? Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, I was born in Istanbul uh, to a Greek Armenian family. Um, who migrated to Los Angeles when I was uh, I was 13 years old, and um, where my first musical uh, experiences started uh, as a teen. Um, I had formed a, a, a sort of a post-punk or punk band when I was uh, 16, 17 years old with a friend. Uh, we ended up recording two albums during that period. Uh, the first one with the producer named Spot, who was the in-house recording engineer of the LA-based uh, punk label called SST Records. In fact, Spot uh, passed away, died a, a few months ago, uh, which was which was news, uh, really sad news, because he wasn't that that old. Uh, but I, I had, you know, I had, I had a lot of affection for for Spot because he was the person who first trusted me and sort of took me under his wings to 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 do the first recording back in very early '80s in Hollywood. So that was the first experience that uh, which was called Wog. Uh, we had some decent exposure in the mid 80s uh, we had one first place in in the radio station called k rock in la um, where they had done a, something called battle of the bands where they were asking about 600 unsigned bands and los angeles had sent them cassettes or demo recordings and they were playing these demo recordings to uh, to the audience a couple of times within a period of six months, and people were voting, calling in and voting. And much to my surprise, uh, the song that I had sent without really thinking much about it ended up uh, coming fir in first place with the votes. Wow. Uh, which, which, yeah, which ended up putting us in contact with MCA Records at the time, who were the partners of the sort of uh, uh, event with K-Rock. And um, so we released an album just after that with WOG. And then I, uh, I, I, I came to Europe. I decided to leave Los Angeles, and I thought that musically what we were doing was more in line with uh, the music that was, that was going on in, in, in Europe more than the States. Mm -hmm. So uh, we ended up going, I, I ended up going to, uh, to France. Um, we had a distribution deal with a company called Semaphore in Holland at the time, uh, which was also one of the reasons where I thought Europe would be more interesting. And then, you know, things led to uh, more personal decisions where, where, where I, I just ended up staying in, in France, uh, first in Paris for about 10 years. And then, um, and then I, I moved to the coast of France in Normandy, and I've been I've been here for the last twenty years or so, where Deleyaman was formed and founded in two thousand, and um, we we've recorded you know all our albums in Normandy ever since. Good for you, man. How difficult was the beginning? I suppose you let the first two, three years when you moved to Los Angeles. I don't know if you knew French at the time or, you know, or, or lead the basic to move, I had move to a basic. country, learn the language, learn the culture. Yeah. 
a little bit of money, no much, say, how do I do, what do I, that's, you that's, know. That's pretty much, uh, yeah, it's pretty much, that was the situation. Um, well, language-wise, it was, yeah, I, I knew very basic French yeah. uh, from childhood. Not only basic, but also sort of like uh, the, the, the kind of French that you speak when you're, when you're children. Yeah, you know, I yeah. didn't know the slang. I had no slang, you know, notion of slang French. And when I came in my late twenties, most of the people you meet at that age are speaking slang. You know, <laughs> they're not speaking the French that you learn in the books. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. So, uh, <laughs> so that, that, in that sense, it was, it was, it was. Uh, I wouldn't say difficult, but it was not what I was expecting. So I had to sort of uh, uh, decode decipher all the cultural uh, signals as well. Uh, because, you, you know, I came to France with the notion that France was something in my imagination based on the books I've read, on the French films that I've seen, and on the, you know, general idea that we have, which is romanticized about any country that we think of from afar. So, um, you know, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a nice discovery. There were some... Uh, disappointments, some, on the contrary, you know, very uh, nice, uh, unexpected surprises. So um, what I did is to learn French, funny enough, I did something really strange. I, my main problem was, in languages that we don't speak, is when you hear people speaking it, usually all people who speak their own language, they speak it fast. Uh, they don't realize that they're speaking it fast, but it's usually the speed where you can't detect the beginning of a word and the end of a word. So you, you don't know where the space is between two words. Because when somebody's speaking, sort of, you know, uh, one word after another, it's, it's difficult. So what I, was, I decided to do is uh, start reading books in French, even though I wasn't understanding 90% of the books I was reading. I was at least seeing the spaces, you know, when it's in print, you see the spaces between the words. So that next time I would hear people speak, and if it's, you know, sounds more or less like the words that I'm getting familiar with as I'm reading, at least I knew where the words, you know, length was, that, you know, it's not connected to the next word. Like, for example, when I say the next word, for somebody who doesn't speak English at all, they don't necessarily hear the next word. Right. the next yep. word so that's yeah yep. is that one word I, is that two words is that, yep. so uh, that was something very helpful funny enough because i was able to see visually where the spaces were and then i just basically um uh i refused to be to hang out with the expat expatriate americans you know they were like in paris neighborhoods where all the americans were hanging out or english-speaking people let's say like uh, the bookstore called shakespeare and company right across from the Notre Dame Cathedral. Yep. Well, first, you always end up going to the places that you know people are hanging out at who speak your language. And then I realized that if I did that too much, uh, I wasn't going to go ahead in French. I, you know, Everybody's hanging out speaking in English. Yep. So I sort of stopped hanging out with the Americans and the, and the English-speaking people. And I started making friends within the French around me and and even though i wasn't understanding everything first i just uh you know you just and you don't know how it happens one day you wake up and you understand <laughs> exactly it's, it's yeah. a strange uh, phenomenon yeah absolutely how do you end up meeting uh beatrice valentine you, you met uh, her at the beatrice, beginning or uh, later on I, no later on much later uh yeah. I met Beatrice around, in 1995, uh, where I was. Uh, I had just came come come back from Los Angeles, where I had spent two years again. Well, for, I was in Paris, and then I went to LA for a couple of years because I had a recording um, deal with a small label who, uh, yeah. who wanted to um, release my piano compositions that I had done completely on the side for my own uh, purposes and. I wasn't thinking much of it, but this person that I had met had, had heard this, 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 these compositions and wanted to release them. So I went to L.A. for a couple of years. And when I came back, I, I visited a friend of mine who had an apartment in Paris, whom I've known for many years. And Beatrice was living with him at the time. 
And so I met Beatrice uh, through a friend. And we, we got along fine in 95. We, we were good friends. And then we ended up uh, seeing more of each other starting 1997 when I came and started living in, in the countryside in France yeah. um, after moving back again from L.A., and that's where Beatrice would be coming on the weekends to spend some weekends with friends. And we'd do a lot of music at the time. You know, it, people forget, but in the, even in the 90s, late 90s, mid 90s, there was no internet. And even if there right. was internet, it was really bad, slow. So nobody was spending all their days on that stuff. So we were spending our days doing, you know, stuff that we don't even imagine anymore, but doing music, talking, you know. <laughs> and uh, playing piano and so uh so during one of those weekends i i i, I heard beatrice singing and her voice seemed uh, uh I, I really liked her voice because i was starting to do some experimentations with recordings uh that that were kind of like they became the prelude of what was to become the first album of the Leaman. Yeah. And um, so I was thinking in those terms and thinking in the terms of those compositions at the time, I thought her vocals would really fit well. So I asked her if she'd be willing to uh, try to record at least one song. You know, my, my idea was just one, one song as a guest vocalist first. And um, she agreed to that. So she came out a couple of months later and we started doing the recording sessions and they went so well that we just you know ex expanded to another song and then to another song <laughs> and, and she ended up you know being practically the entire album as a, as the vocals as a second uh, female vocals and at that point it became obvious that there was um, chemistry was 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 really well artistically yeah. And, and and personally as well. So we we naturally uh, started considering you know her becoming a full time member of the band. Sure. And and then there was Gerard, Gerard who was also at the time uh, I had met a few years ago who was also uh, recording all the duduk parts, the wind instruments. And so the the three of us basically getting together in that countryside house in Normandy. And the in the late nineties, or yeah, around 1999, 2000, uh, that's what gave birth to the first album. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the the first album, right? Um, I think is 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 named zero zero four slash one, and it's it's very yeah. very good, man. Very very good. And now, what twenty twenty three years later, you're still going strong. Yeah. <laughs> Eight and night album and a lot of stuff you do on your own as well is is it's amazing, man. It's amazing that you you know at the beginning it's very difficult to look forward, right? And connect the dog going forward because you don't know what's going to happen in your life. And I, I look at my life too. But going backwards, you know, it, it's easier because you are trying to it's easier to connect the dog, yeah, you know, yeah. to do this part. Get some great people, great music to begin with. The struggle, learn the language, learn the food, learn the culture. The second album, the third, and so on and so forth. So you're 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 yeah, doing good. I think you're right. It's it's much. I mean, you're right in saying that uh, uh, as you're living the present. Well, I, th I think living really in the present, in, in the true sense of the word, uh, mm -hmm. sort of. Uh, 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 keeps you from being able to connect dots because you're just constantly in the present. You're just doing what you have to be doing or you want to do or, or you are doing, period. But when you look back, as you say, it's much easier for you to see sort of uh, uh, why things happen this way or that way because you're able to connect dots that seem sort of maybe uh, incoherent at the time or Correct. confusing yeah. at the time. Uh, but then afterwards, you realize that no, there was some some engine there that is not uh, in, in, totally in your control uh, mm -hmm. that you're a part of, and and I think in a way, what's good about it is that it, it's 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 proof that you were in the present. It's proof that you're really living in the present and not really calculating too much. Mm -hmm. and, and, and which was really true uh, in the case of Deriaman. 
there were no calculations, no no commercial calculations, no no considerations except to do what we wanted to do, and and we were happy to be doing it, taking our time doing it, having the studio at our disposal, doing it in in our in our terms, and uh, taking the time that's necessary to uh, to record, to mix, to master. Mm-hmm. Uh, the present uh, in the most creative of ways for for somebody who's uh, working uh, on creating an album or, or whatever it is that you're creating. Mm-hmm. I think the the pressure you have to get rid of the pressure. Once there's no, if it's possible, if there's no you know artistic pressure on you from anybody from a publisher or a record de- de- label or or whatever, that really makes a huge difference in the way that you sort of. Uh, Go forward. Absolutely, and and also, which is important, you you have a dream, ideas about your life, and you didn't give up. You know, so many people in life, whether you are an artist, a painter, whatever, a writer, a musician, yeah, uh, uh, have some goals, and eventually, well, things didn't work out. They didn't put a lot, of, maybe a lot yeah. of energy. They have a plan B, a plan C, and they give up on music. In your case, and your case, you didn't, right? So you. You say I like music. It's got, it's an important part of my life. I I would like to make a living, and you know, twenty years later, oh, yeah. you're still going. And so, yeah. Well, I th- I think that I think that it's the main reason why uh, why why it makes sense to live, for as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, there, there are very few things. It's you know, it's the love of the, the people uh, that you are very close to, and and and, and the creative drive. Uh, without with, which, I don't really uh, imagine. You know, uh, having a, a, a having. I don't imagine living without creation. I, I I just I just can't imagine it in the sense that I lose the the meaning. I lose the sense of what it is to live if there's no creation involved. Now that's a luxury I'm completely aware of, uh, but it's a luxury that a lot of people do not use, which they have to their in their in their disposal that others don't, unfortunately. So I think that. Uh, the, more, the, the most uh, rational thing I remember doing at the time to be able to continue, as you said, was to uh, lower the, the expenses of my everyday life, you know, the financial burden, uh, which was one of the reasons why I wanted to live in the countryside, because city living was not going to, you know, work out. It was too expensive, and you don't have enough space to be able to create uh, or record you know you have neighbors upstairs downstairs you know <laughs> so th- th- there's no way that's going to work out and plus it's it's much more expensive and especially yeah. a country like france as opposed to other countries in in western europe or in the west in general i think uh it's a country where the difference of uh price is is really really uh obvious between city and countryside I mean, yeah. if you leave Paris and you go 200 kilometers, you know, north, south, west, uh, east, or, 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 or west, the prices really do change considerably. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so that, that, that's the first step, I mean, for me was to make sure that the living expenses are as low as possible so that we can, so that I can continue to, uh, to, to be able to sustain this, this, uh, as you said, this dream or this project of just keeping on, on recording and doing music. And I, I, I still worked, but, you know, small jobs here and there were enough to, uh, to be able to uh, sustain uh, financially where, where, where things aren't that, that bad. And then the other thing is basically you have to be a bit crazy. You, know? you have to have a little bit of folly, <laughs> which is... Uh, which is you can't be rational all the time when you're when you're creating. I mean, if you're creating and you are using the measures of, of your of society, saying what is successful, and since that measure is always coming to money, I mean, you know, if you use that measure, you you'll stop really quickly because it's difficult to make money with your first, second, third album, or even even ever sometimes. Mm-hmm. So you have to have another reason, another measure. Uh, to use to ask yourself if you want to continue or not, and uh, I mean, if it's just money, it's not going to happen. I mean, at least it happens for some people, but uh, 
in the case of, uh, in my case, if I had used the measure of success, you know, uh, according to money, it would have uh, it would have stopped really quickly. So I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> no, good for you, man. Good for you. Yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you mean, man. I want to bring your attention to uh, the last two albums, and, uh, which are both are masterpieces, man. The first one is the Avi, Avi Project. And um, I, I look it up. You know, a, a castle is a sort of presidency for nobility or royalty, and Abby is a religious complex for monks and nuns. Have you end up, um, yeah. I think the city end up creating like a cultural event and then commissioned you to write a, a piece for all the yeah. sort of abbeys in, in northern France in a neighborhood called Normandy. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, yes, that's correct. What, what happened is that... Um, uh, Following the concert that we had given, um, an outdoor concert at, at, a, at a sort of a small castle's um, grounds, it was a outdoor theater. Uh, uh, there were some people in the audience who were the presidents or, or, or the people who take care of the abbeys of Normandy, who, 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 who are, they call it an association here in France. It's an association that, that gather all the abbeys of Normandy. I think there are about 65 of them. And uh, they happened to be in the audience. And following the concert, a couple of months later, I got a phone call uh, of them asking me if I would be you know, willing to compose uh, some music for a cultural event they were preparing. Uh, it was the first edition of a festival uh, which they were calling in French Etonante Abbaye de Normandie, which means the amazing uh, abbeys of Normandy. So they were basically um, uh, creating this cultural, multicultural event where they wanted me to compose the music uh, that would be constantly uh, played uh, like a, a sonic exhibition throughout all the abbeys during the week of that festival. So, um, which means that when you walk into an abbey, the co whether it be outside or inside, there is always constantly the music, you know, being uh, broadcasted during the week where you also have other cultural events happening. Could be a photo exhibition, could be a painting exhibition, could be a, a book reading, whatever. Um, but uh, the, the main... Uh, uh, the main uh, music that I was composing was to become the sonic, you know, background to all this. So they, and they had the theme that they had was uh, silence, which was, which was uh, sort of uh, funny because they, the first thing they asked me was uh, if it bothered me to, to do music for a theme called silence. Um, and I said, no, not at all. Actually, it doesn't make sense to me because to be honest, some of the, I mean, the music that evokes, that, that provokes silence is what I like most in music. I mean, that, that, that it, it's, it's strange to say, but I think that some music uh, basically uh, creates the space within you where there's, you know, there's a silence, but it's not, it's not silence as we know it. You know, it's not an audible silence. It's, it's a silence of introspection sort of like a metaphysical silence. And um, so I, I thought it made sense to do music for a theme called silence. I agreed. But I, I, uh, I didn't know exactly where the, where the places were, so I wanted to see the places, at least a few of them. There were about 15 abbeys that participated to the festival. And so I visited a few of them. Uh, before starting the work, and then I um, I had a long conversation with with many of the people who were running all these abbeys, sort of get the impression of how they how they feel about this project, uh, because I didn't want it to be a religious project per se, simply because. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a festival where they're welcoming people from all over the world to visit these abbeys. And 
all sorts of people are going to go through these places and multicultural and universal. So whether you're, you know, religious or not, whether you're a Buddhist or, you know, whether you're a Catholic or Protestant or atheist, whatever it is that you, you, you are, you don't feel excluded when you hear the music in, in the space, that you feel, on the contrary, you know, connected to it. So that was the main, it was a very general idea that I had. I didn't really have uh, specific ideas for the compositions at the time. Uh, and I asked them if, um, if there, was a, there was any further you know, um, requirements on their part. And they had listened to Dele Yaman. They knew our music, so they, they, they seemed to really like it. And they trusted me enough to give us, you know, carte blanche where they said, no, no, we can do whatever you want. We, we trust you and we'll, we'll, we'll wait for it. And which was great. <laughs> Thanks for you, man. That's, that's a masterpiece. How long did it take for you to, you know, like end to end? Because I think it's 10 musical pieces and uh, 45 minutes yeah. that was broadcasting 14 Abbeys. Uh, what was the process? I mean, for end to end, you have like a six uh, month, a year to do it or? No, I didn't take a year because I wanted to. I want. I really wanted to concentrate on it, and uh, and really, I have a hard time doing parallel projects at the same time. I mean, I can do it, but I don't like it. I like to really immerse myself in one project one at thing. a time. Yeah, yeah. It, that's that's that's. I feel more comfortable with that because I, I really um, because. I mean, most people who, who do this can understand easily that even when you're not working per se with your hands on the machines, on the instruments, on the recording process, you're living the thing constantly. It's always there. So if you're doing one project at a time, you can really get into it 100%. When you wake up in the morning, it's with you. When you're you know, uh, driving, it's with you. When you're shopping for your food, it's with you. So it's a constant thing. If you have too many things going on, you can't do that because you're you're dispersed all over the place. And so I think that yeah, I just decided I'll I'll do this in in one shot, meaning I, uh, I'll get into this and I won't do anything else once it, until it's done. So I, I started um, as soon as I had the green light from them, and I had a date that I had to uh, I had to let's see uh, what was it. I think w they got in touch with me around April. Yeah, it was the March, March or a uh, March maybe. I started, and then uh, I had to turn the work in by uh, latest by mid October. Yep. So I had about six months ahead of me. So uh, I did this for six months almost every day, every day, and I, I basically um, started. The hardest thing was the beginning. The beginning took the longest in the sense that, uh, you know, I, it's very, because the first composition for me sort of becomes the matrix, the, 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 like the mother of all, all the other compositions. Uh, even though it doesn't end up taking central, you know, uh, it doesn't become the central piece necessarily at the end of it all. In the beginning, it does give the, the first... Uh, uh, breath to the rest to come. So uh, finding that first piece was was the key. And uh, you know, I struggled a little bit in the beginning because I really didn't want to do something which is only ambient. I didn't just want some you know new age ambient sounds in the background. Uh, that, that I wanted something that had some some bones, you know. Uh, so I was looking for to compose as I would an album, but always bearing in mind that these are going to be, you know, broadcasted in the midst of all this, uh, you know, thousand year old architecture. So, yeah. and once I got the first, first piece, then the second piece follows and then the third, and then once you have a couple of pieces, then, then because of the coherence you're looking for, the direction becomes clearer, uh, and then there, and then you work more to avoid things that are obvious, 
as you're going along, you know what's obviously not working, and you know what's obviously working as you go. At least that's yeah. the case for me. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a masterpiece. And, and I think the, the, the cultural art festival took place between October 26th and November yeah. the 1st of 2022. So they... They they did it only that week last year, or it's going to be as far as you know, every every year the same week, every year the same week. Yeah, to, they, to, uh, so that was the first. Uh, that was the first edition. So they're they're doing that festival every year, but yeah. this first year's edition was the composition was the the main central focus. But yeah. uh, ever since I did have discussions with them, and I have given them given them the. Um, uh, uh, authorization for them to be able to use the music every time, right. every year if they want, because they ended up um, uh, asking, you know, other abbeys afterwards following that festival. Just a few months ago, for example, I got some phone calls from uh, from some people who had heard the music in one of the abbeys who were, you know, airing it, playing it during uh, some weekend of uh, events. So, yeah, they, I think they're using the music on and off, and I, they have the, they have my authorization to do so. So, um, so there. Yeah, I, I think uh, once the album was uh, was was done, uh, they were really happy with it. They uh, so they they wanted to you know extend uh, the use for of the music, and uh, not all of them, but I think that uh, throughout the years, probably probably they will use it on and off. And I'll, I'll you know they'll let me know. But uh, sure. It, uh, Did, and I'm happy with that. I'm I'm happy because that was the point uh, to begin with. That's Exactly. Yeah, I I never been in that part of France, Normandy, and I was um, when I was you know I knew your music obviously, and I was I I I look I went to YouTube and looked some picture, looked some video from the Abbey Abbey's, and uh, yeah, man, it's it's, it's amazing, man, it's amazing, beautiful, beautiful. Oh yeah, beautiful. we didn't talk about that. We talked only about the music, but the places yeah. are absolutely amazing. And even if you don't have an inspiration in the beginning, all you have to do is go and visit those places, and you know, yeah, it's just yeah. uh, especially the, the there were a couple of them because what we did with Beatrice once the, during that week of uh, exhi exhibition uh, during the festival, we took the car from here and we did almost ten of them just during the whole weekend, and we sort of visited while you know the music was being played while everybody was around and and. Couple of the abbeys are basically old vestiges, you know, old ruins, and the music was being played, being broadcasted outdoors within, within those ruins, and it's fantastic because it's really uh, not the music, but but the the two together, the music plus the architecture together, they create like a third uh, element, which is the it's sort of like a film as you're walking through. It depends on the on the hour of the day where you're walking through, it depends on the on, on, on the if it's sunny or if it's cloudy, if it's drizzling, if the birds are singing as you're you know it's it really all the elements sort of come together. So the music becomes one of the many elements. Absolutely, I, I, yeah. I'm quite sure the people all over the world, you know, not just French people, but people all over the world want to take like a week off and. You know, arrive there, rent a car, and drive around. And uh, you know, especially nowadays with the crazy time it would that be we wonderful. Did. Yeah, it, it would be wonderful. But unfortunately, I, I have a feeling that people rather go to Disneyland than visit places like this. Which <laughs> yeah, no, I, but, I, I know, bet you would rather it's go sad. there. It's, it's, yeah, oh, but it's it's fantastic. I mean, you see some you know really incredible uh, uh, architecture and. Not only the architecture, the, the places that where they have cho the, the actual geographical locations where they have chosen to build these edifices, these abbeys are also on their own fantastic uh, regions. I mean, it's in the middle of forests. So, some of them are on, on, on hilltops. Some of them, some of them are just in a small village, and 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 they're really. Uh, I think they, they still have. Um, it's it's magical. To, to, to visit and if you're basically just uh, open to you know uh, to, to to capturing what's there you know the essence uh, it, it's and plus it's really quiet so you don't have all this you know even though you, there may be a lot of people visiting it's so there's so much space and 
uh, they're, they're so huge in their, you know, uh, the, the, the properties or, or where they're on that you can be walking on your own for you know, four hours just in silence. It's really nice. Yeah. And there is one in particular, I believe, that is in the, it's like a, I don't know, like an island could be that was like a big rock. I think the name oh, was Mont Saint Michel. Mont Saint Michel, yeah, Mont Saint Michel. Mont Saint Michel, yeah. It's yeah. a masterpiece, man. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's an amazing. It's probably the. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's it's one of the eight marvels of the world or something. Wow. Uh, of, of human creations. Yeah, it's yeah. quite. A, and uh, when the tide comes in, it's it's covered. You know, it's like an island. So you have you yeah. know the sea all yeah. around. And when a tide pulls back, then you can actually walk uh, on the sand to it. Uh, yeah, I've been there a few times, and it's it's right on the border of Normandy and Brittany. It's on the it's in Normandy, yeah. And uh, uh, it's 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 right you know it's right on the border, and um, it, it's a fantastic place. In fact, we're, we we have plans to do a concert there soon. I hope that it'll work out. When when do you? It's possible to. I've been Say talking when? to uh, ever, ever since this uh, this Abbey project. Uh, I met some people uh, yeah. uh, because of it, and uh, some of the abbeys were in, because Mont Saint Michel is a part of the entire you know abbeys of Normandy. Of so course, they're, yeah. they're a part of the project. So uh, we we're supposed to do something, but it's it's tough to find uh, the right um, right date to make sure that you know. Uh, everybody's available because we like to do so, like a really nice project. Uh, maybe like a concert would be a concert reading with the uh, with the French actress Fanny Ardon, with whom we worked with in the past. Right. So, yes. um, so I, I have some plans, some that, to do something there, but um, it's still in the conversation stages. Man, I hope uh, I will. Let me know in advance. I would love to go. Oh, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you. I'll definitely like let to, you know. <clears throat> go there. Oh, sorry, uh, and visit the place, which is, um, as I say, yeah. the, the the that that was built like in the at least a thousand years ago, and uh, I, I they yeah. have different layers. I think the the first yeah. layer, the basement, basement, still there. As they build another layer on top and another. It, yeah, you know, yeah. 11th century, 12th century, 13th century, and then they start yeah. building to the right and to the left. It's a, and, and then good music in the background, and maybe a good coffee and a good beer. What else you want in life, man? They, 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 they have, they have, uh, they have some little coffee shops all around, uh, and and uh, that that looks straight out to the sea and and to the to the landscape. There was a great movie that I had seen in the 80s or was it early 90s called Mind Walk. Mind walk that takes yeah. place, yeah, mind walk that takes place in Mont Saint Michel.